I'm now joined by Upmanu Law in New York City. He's the director of the Columbia Water Center, and also he is an Alan and Carol Superstein Professor of Engineering at Columbia University. Sir, welcome to join us. Uh, can you first of all give us a sense of just how severe is Brazil's current water crisis? So I'm very concerned hearing the things coming out of Brazil. They've had a serious drought in many regions. They are deforesting the Amazon, and the use of pesticides collectively is a serious problem. Uh, we have gone through similar problems in the United States, and uh, we see the results of those. Uh, there's chronic contamination of groundwater and surface waters. And the concern that I have is not limited to drinking water, because as people consume the foods or even wines that are produced in these regions, Pesticides and pesticide residues and arsenic typically will show up with those products. So what, you know, the concern I have is for the Brazilians, of course, but since Brazil exports much of their agricultural produce, uh, as the world starts seeing what, what is coming to them as pesticides, they may also reject buying uh, uh, Brazilian products because, as you know, over ac across the world, people who are affluent, who are more educated, are typically moving now towards organic products. Now, President Jair Bolsonaro is closely allied uh, to the agricultural business that makes up a quarter of Brazil's GDP. He has proved scores of new pesticide products. How do you think policies like this play into all this? So I think that, as I was saying, the, the problem that I see with this is that in Term, this might increase their productivity, but as countries such as China, who is a major agricultural uh, importer from uh, Brazil, start realizing the degree of pesticides and other chemicals that are included in what they are importing from Brazil, it's conceivable that this comes back to bite them and uh, no one is interested in buying those products. Uh, so that, I think, is the negative. Of course, the human health aspects also have to be significant here, and that's the internal Brazilian issue. And I think that from what we have seen in the U.S. and the stricter standards in the EU, this is simply not a good idea. And how do you think uh, civil society organizations, um, what, what can they do uh, to help alleviate the situation? I think that testing, as they are doing, of, the, uh, of pesticides and other chemicals uh, in the drinking water supplies is clearly a first step. Citizen science will prevail here. Uh, I think the, the people who are in universities and people in the non-government organizations are justifiably raising the alarm. And I expect that they will be heard. Uh, but I also see the challenges that in terms of a policy regime, it may be difficult for them to get quick action. And finally, what are some of the best practices um, globally Brazil can perhaps borrow to resolve its current situation? I think the very first thing is to have an overall standard for the total limit on pesticides or other chemicals. Uh, on the drinking water side, I think they may have no choice as these policies continue to move to a very high degree of treatment to assure safe drinking water supplies for people. Uh, for example, uh, in many places where pesticides have become an issue, drinking water is now treated by individuals using reverse osmosis or, or nanofiltration. And Brazil may have no choice but to go to that. So the expense on that will far outweigh the gains they are getting on agriculture in this respect. Um, the second thing that I think they will start realizing in terms of agricultural mm -hmm. practices is that they will have to start looking at practices that use um, Specifically, they don't use things such as glyphosate, which now is banned in the United States as of 2015, yet modifications of glyphosate and their application continue in Brazil. Ubmanu Law from Columbia University, thanks so much.